friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast. John and Alan in the studio here in the week of October 4th. Happy October. Yes, here it we feels are. good to be in a new, new month. We just wrapped up a four-part series in September on where we are in the world and what it's doing to our souls and how to begin to kind of recover from pandemic trauma, shepherding our hearts. Yes. It was fascinating, Alan. We got some feedback that I would love to respond to. Um, Good feedback, questions about Mm -hmm. primarily around the word recovery. And the idea being, what? What are you talking about? The world (laughs) is still sideways. It there is nothing that's right. You know, whether you look at politics or economy or schools or, you know, Mm -hmm. know, homecomings just got canceled and kids are, you know, in and out and all the chaos, right? Yes. But I thought even on a deeper level, one really good letter we got was a very thoughtful listener was saying, hey, I don't know if you've looked around, but (laughs) the war, Mm -hmm. you know, the great war, the Mm -hmm. war for the human heart, the war of God against evil in the world is actually still very intense. How are you talking about recovery? And and what they were misunderstanding was, I didn't mean the world is in recovery, like we're recovering now. We're good, we're out of the woods, right? right? We're out of the woods, (laughs) we're out of the dark, we're out of the night. No, that's That's not what we meant. What we meant to say is, Actually, we believe all of that. We believe the war for the human heart is at an all-time high. We do think the great, the great story yes. is very intense right now, and that's why we did the series. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, maybe recovery wasn't the right word. Maybe it is deeper strength, deeper connection to God. This is a time to take our spiritual lives very seriously. That's good. Because things are still so chaotic and probably will be for some time. Right. Mm. So we want to do a couple podcasts here to start October around the idea of, of just strength, strength of heart, strength of soul, strength of spirit. And we want to begin with prayer. Mm-hmm. And I was reading Daniel recently. I've been in Daniel. I, I it's just so admire his life. And this little phrase captures the beauty of this man's inner world. It captures the beauty of his life with God. In chapter 6 of Daniel, it says, Daniel went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done giving thanks to his God. And what I love about that, Alan, is that that little phrase, just as he's always done. In other words, mm. this is his habit. Yes. This is his routine. This is his normal. He's yes. not He's not making a super, you know, over-the-top effort. Once in a lifetime moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah this right. is going to be his special <laughs> week of prayer or whatever. This This is what he does. And then everything else you see about Daniel, like his courage in the face of the lion's den, his unwillingness to compromise before the king, you know, his boldness. Yes. All that strength is coming out of his secret life, mm-hmm. his private life with God. Right. And for him, it's rooted in prayer three times a day, morning, noon, and night. And so what we want to do here on October 4th is come back to the daily prayer. Alan and I recorded a podcast several years ago around the daily prayer that is just so helpful and enriching and strengthening. I thought, you know what? As we're talking about prayer, let's pick up an excerpt from that to get us into the month and kind of get us all dialed back into yeah, where did my prayer life go? And I do need some new yes. fuel there. So many of our listeners use the daily prayer, but what we're going to do this time, to me this fascinating, is you're going to walk us through the daily prayer with me asking you some questions about, wait, what does this phrase mean? And yes. why are we praying this now at this point? And, and I think that the listeners are going to find this fascinating because even if you do the daily prayer regularly, 
understanding the power of it and how it came to be is huge. Well, and I don't think it is regular. I, I think there's a few who are regularly, but it all, for all of us, it yeah. slips away. Yeah. Prayer slips away. And we toss up a quick, you know, help me Jesus on, right. on the way out the door. So let's come back to our spiritual practices. Let's come back to recovering a richer prayer life, mm. maybe morning, noon, and night for ourselves with the daily prayer. John, I actually don't know the story of how you came up with the daily prayer. And so if we can, I'd love to start there. Just like it wasn't there one day, and then one day it was there. How did that story of it coming together happen? In the early days of Ransomed Heart, we had no idea how far the impact of this ministry was going to go. And friends, if you're, if you're not aware of that, we are all over the world and our books are in like 30 languages. We're in house churches in China. We're in Catholic monasteries in Slovakia. We're in drug prisons in Medellin, Colombia. I mean, we, Ransomed Heart, when you said there's probably, you know, thousands praying the daily prayer, the truth of it is it's probably hundreds of thousands. And it's, it's a remarkable story. It's a total God story. We are a lemonade stand. We are a little group of people that God has entrusted a very beautiful and very healing message to, and it's gone bonkers. I mean, it's gone all over the world. We didn't know that that was going to happen, but the warfare should have been an indication, because in the early days of starting Ransomed Heart, holy cow, we were just kind of trying to live, quote, the normal Christian life, which, you know, I think for most people is dash out the door say a couple quick prayers in your car on the way to work, right. and then jump into your day. And it wasn't working. We, we were forced, really, in some ways, to, to develop our own prayer life, to learn more about prayer, how it works, how to pray. And over time, we, we found, and I wish, I wish I could credit this dear person, but this goes back 30 years and I've tried to find the book, and I couldn't find it. But in some, you know, Neil Anderson has a, a daily prayer in his books, and some of the uh, some of the writers do too. But I don't know where the original iteration came from. I read something that was like a daily prayer, and I'm like, oh wow, that's super helpful. I think I think I'll begin to do that. And then, you know, over the months and over the years, and oh my goodness, over 20 years, we've we've changed it, we've adapted it, we've added to it. What we want to do today. I'd like to just pray through it, kind of like a paragraph at a time, and then pause and make some observations about it. So let me let me just start with um, the opening of the prayer. And John, if people want to follow along, they can go to the website or their app. And so as you're reading this, if you're listening and want to follow, go there or print it out or just look online mm -hmm. and you can go with us paragraph by paragraph. Yeah, and we're using the the basic version. There is something called the extended version and uh, I'll explain that later, but this is the shorter version. My dear Lord Jesus, I come to you now to be restored in you, renewed in you, to receive your life and your love and all the grace and mercy I so desperately need this day. I honor you as my Lord, and I surrender every aspect and dimension of my life to you. I give you my spirit, soul, and body. I give you my heart, mind, and will. I cover myself with your blood, my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. I ask your Holy Spirit to restore me in you, renew me in you, and lead this time of prayer. In all that I now pray, I stand in total agreement with your Spirit and with all those praying for me by the Spirit of God and by the Spirit of God alone. And so that's how the daily prayer begins. And I, I want to pause and make an observation about prayer. So this isn't a quick, hey, Jesus, be with me today prayer. There's substance to it. There's an, quite a number of paragraphs to it. You, you have to be present to it. And that is the entire point. Whatever else prayer is for, whatever else you want to see accomplished through prayer, Oswald Chambers says that the first and the 
basic function of prayer is always union with God. And so there's a, there's a coming back in this prayer. There is a returning to God. There is a realignment and kind of a realignment of the various parts of us, our hearts, our minds, our bodies. They, you'll hear as we pray through this, there is a deliberate, loving, intentional sort of return to God, a, a realignment with him, which is a really beautiful thing, friends, and, and really essential to all prayer. And then, as you'll hear, the second part is embracing and receiving again the provision of God, embracing it, uh, confessing it, declaring all that God has done for us, his provision, particularly through the work of Christ, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and receiving it again and afresh into our lives. So there's like a coming home, there's a returning, and then there's an embracing and a receiving. And then thirdly, as you'll hear as we get into it, then, then there is an enforcing of the authority of Jesus and the work of Christ in our personal kingdoms. And I think those three things are what make the daily prayer so powerful it's, it's, um, and make any form of prayer. First, it's union with God. First, it is a returning and a realigning. And then it, it's receiving again in a fresh way all that, he, all that he's provided for us. And then we have the intentional enforcing of the kingdom of God through our lives. And so, I mean, we're only in paragraph one, but it gives me the opportunity to say a couple things about prayer. Okay, so let's pick up. Dearest God, holy and victorious Trinity, you alone are worthy of all my worship, my heart's devotion, all my praise, all my trust, all the glory of my life. I love you. I worship you. I give myself over to you. In my heart's search for life, you alone are life, and you have become my life. I renounce all other gods, every idol, and I give to you, God, the place in my heart and in my life that you truly deserve. This is all about you. It's not about me. You are the hero of this story, and I belong to you. And so I ask your forgiveness for my every sin. Search me, know me, reveal to me where you are working in my life, and grant me the grace of your healing and deliverance and a deep and true repentance. So we'll pause here and make a couple of observations. The second paragraph into the daily prayer, he and I, here we go. Now we're getting going, right? And what I want you to notice is the reorientation, that I'm turning my heart's gaze from my world and my crises and my drama to the living God, and I, I'm declaring him victorious. I, I'm declaring him the object of my worship and my devotion. And and most importantly here, this part about giving my heart to you. I give my heart to you in my search for life. That's the core issue. It always is the core issue. That we wander and we take our hearts and our desperate need for life. And, and you know, in any given day, in any given week, we, we wander. You know, we take it, we put it on our work, we put it on another human being, we put it on a vacation or a promotion— and just to come back in our reorientation and to say to God, you are my life. Yes. And one of my favorite parts of the whole daily prayer is in the middle of the second paragraph where it says, this is all about you and not about me. You were the hero of this story. And John, that's so reorienting every day to me. Isn't it? Like, oh yeah, I'm not the hero of the story. It's not all about me. And it's not up to me. Or, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And then this lovely little phrase at the end, search me, know me, reveal to me where you're working in my life. Okay. That's all I want to know. I don't want to know all my faults. <laughs> I, I don't want to know all of my issues. All I'm asking God today is just show me 
what we're working on together today. And that's a very, very kind part of the reorientation. I'm here. I'm back. I love you. I present myself to you. You are my life. And now just just show me what we're working on (laughs) today. Okay? All right. Paragraph three. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me and choosing me before you made the world. You are my true Father, my creator, redeemer, sustainer, and the true end of all things, including my life. I love you. I trust you. I worship you. I give myself over to you, Father, to be one with you, as Jesus is one with you. Thank you for proving your love, sending Jesus. I receive him and all his life, and all his work, which you provided for me. Thank you for including me in Christ, for forgiving me my sins, for granting me his righteousness, making me complete in him. Thank you for making me alive with Christ, raising me with him, seating me with him at your right hand, establishing me in his authority, and anointing me with your love and your spirit, and your favor. I receive it all with thanks, and I give it total claim to my life, my spirit, soul, body, my heart, mind, and will. Now, gang, I love this prayer. I love this prayer. It is so good to just pause and and look at it and pray it together. You'll notice that we begin to address the Trinity, the, the different members of the Trinity. And this is actually really beautiful, and it's very formational in your maturity as a believer, because we have a Father. We have such a good Father, and we have Jesus. We have such a good Lord, and we have the Holy Spirit. And each of them, if you'll notice in scriptures, play different roles in our lives. And we get to the Spirit, you know, He's our counselor. He's our comforter. He sent to lead us into all truth. And so here we begin to address the members of the Trinity very specifically. And I want to point out, you know, we're coming to the Father asking him to be one with him, just like Jesus is. Because this is the mind blower. This this is one of the big watershed moments in the Christian life. When you realize, as Philippians explains in many other passages, Jesus emptied himself in order to take on a genuine humanity. And everything you see in the relationship of the man, Jesus Christ, with his heavenly Father, you are also meant to have. Okay, so when Jesus says, I and the Father are one, then he goes on in John 17 to pray, but Father, I pray that all of our dear sons and daughters would be one with us. So we're praying for oneness, we're praying for union with the Father. And then this other passage, which for me is so, so important, middle of the, of the paragraph, I said, thank you for proving your love. How? By sending Jesus. Because every day, every week in our lives, the the heart of God toward us, his love toward us, is thrown into question. Well, this didn't work out, and that prayer didn't get answered, and I don't have enough money to pay my rent, and what about my kid? And and just to remind ourselves, as Romans declares, Romans 5 declares, God proved his love by sending Jesus, and we have to stay anchored there. We have to, because the daily life is a roller coaster ride, and sometimes it looks like he does love us, and sometimes it looks like he doesn't, right? And so, friends, there is something so powerful. Part of what's going on in the daily prayer, the power of it is you are declaring the truth. You're declaring it. You're proclaiming it. You chose me, Father, right? You proved your love, and then on into the work of Christ. You forgave me. You've given me the righteousness of Christ. You've made me complete. These are all scriptural passages here. And it's very, very powerful for your own spirit and soul and body to proclaim these things every day. 
and, and to make a fresh agreement with them. It's, and it's so helpful to hear you explain this, John, because even as someone who prays it daily, I, I love seeing the nuances in this. So this is really good. The next three paragraphs in the daily prayer are to Jesus and with Jesus and in Jesus. And it, they focus on the cross, the resurrection, and the ascension. And what's so critical about this is most Christians, kind of your average typical you know, Christian experience is you have a little bit of the cross. You, you have forgiveness. But the cross does a whole lot more than that. And But we don't have the resurrection, and we don't have the ascension. And it is so powerful and beautiful and vital for us to declare it again, receive it again, take our place in it. So in these next three paragraphs, we turn our attention to Jesus. Jesus, thank you for coming to ransom me with your own life. I love you. I worship you. I trust you. I give myself over to you to be one with you in all things. I receive all the work and the triumph of your cross, death, blood, and sacrifice for me, through which my every sin is atoned for. I am ransomed, delivered from the kingdom of darkness, transferred to your kingdom. My sin nature is removed. My heart is circumcised unto God. And every claim being made against me is canceled and disarmed. I take my place now in your cross and death, dying with you to sin, to my flesh, to this world, to the evil one and his kingdom. I take up the cross and crucify my flesh with all its pride, arrogance, unbelief, and idolatry. And then there's a little parenthetical remark here to put in anything else you find yourself currently struggling with. I put off the old man. Apply to me all the work and triumph in your cross, death, blood, and sacrifice. I receive it again with thanks, and I give it total claim to my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. Now, gang, I hope one of the things that you're noticing as I pray along through this here in the podcast together is I'm not blowing through it. It's not, Jesus, thank you for coming to ransom me with your own life. I love you, worship you, trust you. I give myself over to you. Right. I am, I am being intentional. I am being present. One of the secrets of prayer is the more present you are to it, the more you are inhabiting it truly agreeing with it, you know, really conscious and willful about what you are saying, frankly, the more it's going to work, gang. It's that just is a truth. E.M. Bounds, you know, the old saint that wrote so many fantastic books on prayer, you know, he said the whole person has to be involved in the praying, right? You, it's passion, it's involvement, it's engagement. And I hope that that you're hearing that as I go through the prayer. And again, in the prayer, we are declaring what's true, and we are embracing and receiving it again. We're literally taking our place in it. Friends, you understand. I don't think anybody needs to explain to you that we wander. <laughs> <laughs> we wander. We wander from God. We wander from ourselves. George MacDonald, in that beautiful poem, says, Sometimes I wake and lo, I have forgot my soul has drifted out upon the tide, right? We do. It, you're, and so this is, a, this is an intentional coming back, first in the cross and all that that has done to cleanse us, ransom us, deliver us from the sin nature, and also disarm the enemy, by the way, and then into the resurrection here in the next paragraph. Now, it's not just about putting off the old. It's about receiving the life of God. This is the epicenter, really, of the daily prayer. Jesus, I also receive you as my life, and I receive all the work and triumph in your resurrection, through which you have conquered sin, death, judgment, and the evil one. Death has no power over you, nor does any foul thing. 
and I have been raised with you to a new life, to live your life, dead to sin, alive to God. And so I take my place now in your resurrection and in your life, and I give my life to you to live your life. I am saved by your life. I reign in life through your life. I receive your hope, your love, faith, joy, your goodness, trueness, wisdom, power, and strength. Apply to me all the work and triumph in your resurrection. I receive it with thanks, and I give it total claim to my spirit, soul, and body, to my heart, mind, and will. And gang, this This is just so critical to realize that we are not only ransomed by the cross of Christ, but we have been given a new life. We have literally been raised to life with Christ. And I I I understand the question. I really do. But so many people ask me, you know, how how come I don't experience more of God in my life? How come I just don't see him coming through more? And, and I, with gentleness, with humility, I really want to first ask, well, tell me with what you're doing with all that he has already provided. I mean, he has already done massive things in heaven and on earth on your behalf. And before we, you know, kind of you scrutinize what God is and isn't doing currently in our moment, you know, I really want to be kind but firm and ask, well, first, are we even embracing and living out everything he has already provided for us? Because if we did, what kind of difference would that make in our life, right? So, We're embracing the cross, the resurrection, and then the ascension. John, before we go on, just a question for you, because throughout the daily prayer already in the paragraphs we've read, a phrase that is used quite a bit, almost every paragraph is, we give this total claim to our spirit, soul, and body, our heart, mind, and will. Now, I I get the body, the heart, the mind, the will, but can you take just a second on the spirit and soul and distinguish between those two? Yeah. Yeah, so obviously we have a body, and and we also are immortal beings as well. We're not just physical beings. We have immortal aspects to us. And the Scripture describes those variously as spirit and soul, and then I think within the soul, heart, mind, and will. So, for example, Alan, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul is praying— He's praying for us, and he says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, which is really what the daily prayer does, by the way. He says, May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. So there you have it, right? Paul kind of naming spirit, soul, and body. The spirit I would describe as the breath of God in us. It is says, you know, God breathed into the soil, and Adam became a life-giving spirit, a, a, a living spirit, right? So, we receive our spiritual being from the Spirit of God. Soul is that rich, vast uniqueness to the human being of creativity and memory and passion and emotion and desire and primarily heart mind, and will. And so, there's a lot of different ways. This isn't meant to be a a medical textbook on the human personality, but I've just found in my prayer life, I, I need to pray. I need to pray with my spirit, soul, and body. I need to pray with my whole heart, mind, and will. So, that's why I keep repeating those phrases. That's helpful. Okay, gang, now to the ascension. Jesus, I also sincerely receive you as my authority, rule, and dominion, my everlasting victory against Satan and his kingdom, and my ability to bring your kingdom at all times and in every way. I receive 
all the work and triumph in your ascension, through which Satan has been judged and cast down. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. All authority in the heavens and on this earth has been given to you, Jesus, and you are worthy to receive all glory and honor, power and dominion now and forever. I take my place now in your authority and in your throne, through which I have been raised with you to the right hand of the Father and established in your authority. And so I give myself to you to reign with you always. Apply to me all the work and triumph in your authority and in your throne. I receive it with thanks and I give it total claim to my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. Now, gang, this is huge. If, if, if this is a new thought to you, the authority of Jesus is something you share in. In fact, it's something so critical to the Christian life that it is just tragic to think of how many ages and how many believers ha- have not received, understood, participated in the authority that we have in Christ. And so first we're declaring it, right? The great victory of Jesus is disarming the evil one and all authority being transferred to Christ. And then we take our place in it. It's very interesting. At the end of Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is praying for us again, and he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be opened to understand this. And he goes into the authority of Jesus for quite a while, and he says that God raised him up, seated him at his right hand, put all things under his feet. But then, Alan, he ends the chapter with this, for the church. Mm. In other words, God did all this for us, right? Right. Yeah, Jesus didn't need the cross, the resurrection, and the ascension. We did. Right. Okay, and so learning to receive it, learning to exercise it, to take our place in it is just super helpful. And John, when it when you say here toward the end of this paragraph, I give myself to you to reign with you always, that's such an intriguing and and powerful phrase because I I think for most of my Christian life, early life, I thought we would reign with Christ when we were yeah. in eternity. Later in heaven. Sometime. But but this prayer, I mean, it's an invitation to reign with him in the day exactly. now. Exactly. Okay. So here we go. I now bring the authority, rule, and dominion of the Lord Jesus Christ and the full work of Christ over my life today. Okay, so we are now beginning to enforce that, right? Over my home, my household, my work, over all my kingdom and domain, I bring the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and the full work of Christ against every evil power coming against me, against every foul spirit, every foul power and device. And then again, we have a little parenthetical note here. You might need to name them. What has been attacking you? So I'll pause at this point in the prayer. And so if it's guilt and shame that I've been getting assaulted with, I'll bring the authority of Christ and the work of Christ against guilt and shame. If it's fear, or fear in the night as assaults so many people. No, today in the morning, I bring the authority of Christ and the victory of Christ against fear. So, gang, this is so helpful. So much of what you have been living under, Christ has actually given you the victory over. We must now apply it. God doesn't do everything for us. Okay, when my kids were young, yes, I I tied their own shoe I literally put their food in their mouth when they were babies. But as they grow up, we want them to do more and more of it, right? Right. I, exactly. So we pause here so that people can name things that are coming against them. And John, when you say foul power, foul spirit, and device, describe what device means. Well, it would probably take a podcast on spiritual warfare, and, and I can hear one coming because we probably need that. But for example, the scripture teaches that there are fallen angels in the world. 
Those are called mm-hmm. demons or foul spirits or unclean spirits, and, and they have various purposes and functions. They have various strengths, and they come against us. But we're also very aware, Scripture teaches very clearly about witchcraft. It condemns it, and it wouldn't condemn it if it didn't work, right? It, it, and scripture doesn't condemn people trying to fly like birds because it doesn't work. You can't, you know, go for it. It's not going to work. Witchcraft is a very evil and powerful thing in the world today. And if people are cursing you, for example, that would be an evil device, right? So I'm just, I'm bringing the work of Christ against these things so that I can live with a free heart today. And then it goes on. It says, I cut them off in the name of the Lord. I bind and banish them from me and from my kingdom now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I also bring the full work of Christ between me and every person, and I allow only the love of God and only the Spirit of God between us. Now, this is a doozy and a new category for many people, right? That spiritual warfare works like a computer virus. It it will try and transfer from one person to another. In addition to that, people sin against you. People judge you. People envy you. People lust after you, right? And so we want to bring the work of Christ between us and all people, right? And allow only the love of God and only the Spirit of God between us, which keeps human relations healthy and whole. Okay, so now we've gone through um, the cross, the resurrection, the ascension, and now we can turn to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming. I love you. I worship you. I trust you. I receive all the work and triumph in Pentecost through which you have come. You have clothed me with power from on high, sealed me in Christ, become my union with the Father and the Son, the Spirit of truth in me, the life of God in me, my counselor, my comforter, my strength, my guide. I honor you as Lord, and I fully give to you every aspect and dimension of my spirit, soul, and body, my heart and mind and will, to be filled with you, to walk in step with you in all things. Fill me afresh, Holy Spirit. Restore my union with the Father and the Son, Lead me into all truth. Anoint me for all of my life and walk and calling, and lead me deeper into Jesus today. I receive you with thanks, and I give you total claim to my life. I love honoring the Holy Spirit as part of this prayer. He tends to get a a, a lot of um, kind of back seat in, in Christendom. Not many people pray to the Holy Spirit. Not many people honor the Holy Spirit as Lord, but as Scripture says, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Holy Spirit is also Lord, and to give him lordship in your life. And sometimes I'll pause here and I'll, I'll pray, Holy Spirit, come, in, come into this relationship today, or, or come into our family, you know, inviting him into my kingdom and letting him have his, you know, influential work It's just blessing and blessing. Okay, gang, just two more paragraphs. Now we're coming in for a landing. Heavenly Father, thank you for granting to me every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians 1. I claim the riches in Christ Jesus over my life today. I bring the blood of Christ once more over my spirit, soul, and body, my heart, mind, and will. I put on the full armor of God the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the helmet of salvation. I take up the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, and I choose to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of your might, to pray at all times in the Spirit. So, gang, obviously, the spiritual armor of God is not a metaphor it's not poetry. These are real things. Like you, in the spirit realm, you literally now have a breastplate on. You literally have a helmet on. And so, taking the armor of God seriously, and and not just as a as a lovely symbolism, 
but as something very real that you need, super helpful. And then last paragraph, Jesus, thank you for your angels. I summon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I instruct them to destroy all that is raised against me, to establish your kingdom over me, to guard me day and night. I ask you to send forth your spirit to raise up prayer and intercession for me, and I now call forth the kingdom of God throughout my home, my household, my kingdom and domain, in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving all glory and honor and thanks to him in Jesus' name. That's huge. I mean, and even the last paragraph, John, when it says, to instruct the angels to destroy all that is raised against us and to establish his kingdom over us and guard us, like it allows us to move from a posture of defense, reactionary, oh no, the day's going south, like right. mayday, right. to all of a sudden start the morning with a proactive posture of, I'm going to initiate this for my home, for my heart, for my life. And and so that's been the shift in my own world is I no longer now deal with the day as the day comes. I begin it with God through the power of this daily prayer. Mm-hmm. And, and gang, the you know Hebrews 1 are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who shall inherit salvation. The angels are here for you. They are here for your benefit. And so to call on them and ask their help is really good, right? You don't want to go out into your day, you know, without their assistance. And then just kind of wrapping it up by just calling forth and commanding the kingdom of God through our homes and households and work and kingdom. This this is taking place as you do it, right? We live in a very dynamic world, and Paul laments that certain believers have lost their connection with Christ. Uh, in Colossians, he laments that, and, and because they wandered away. Like, this is a dynamic world, and we can choose to realign. We can choose to take our place. We can choose to embrace and to enforce all that God has already provided for us. I just want to say, try it. There's an audio version on the app as well and on our website. And so, if you know, you're at the gym or you're out for a walk, you can listen while I pray along through any of these prayers, the daily prayer or the extended version or the bedtime prayer, all I want to say is give it two weeks. Just yes. try two weeks yes. of this. And if it doesn't help, yeah, drop it like a hot potato because I know that the fruit of this is so wonderful and so helpful. It's, it's, uh, it's going to change your life. And a beautiful aspect of this daily prayer is, yes, you can pray it alone, but you can pray it with your spouse. We pray it when we go to Ransomed Heart events, captivating and and boot camps together as a team. Yeah. And we'll each take a paragraph. Yeah. And so that's a beautiful thing to try too if you haven't done this yet with your band of brothers, with your spouse, with, with your kids. Yeah, kids. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So John, you did say earlier there's an extended version of the daily prayer. When would you recommend people use that versus this version? Uh, well, I started with this version because I think for most people, they're already kind of thinking, wow, that's that's a lot of praying. That's a lot. There were several paragraphs to that. Um, But once you get into it, you're going to love this so much. It it just, it's going to become like riding a bike. You just, it gets into you and, and it just flows. The extended version is longer and it was developed in times of very intense spiritual assault for us. Times when we were, you know, on mission or in foreign countries advancing the gospel, times where our families were feeling under great attack back at home, and and we just had to do a little bit more enforcing. And so we pause at the cross and we 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 enforce the cross more in our kingdom. We pause at the resurrection and we enforce it. We when we hit the ascension, we do more enforcing over very specific things like witchcraft and and people cursing us and if you are in a time of intense you know spiritual assault or or attack over your work or your health your family yeah it's helpful 
It really is. And it's the second one listed right there on the app and on the website. You can find it very easily. There's also a version that we call Head of Household. And and that's important because for moms and dads and, and people that have, you know, others living under them to enforce this over your kids, enforce this over your household is very effective. And so there's a version where you're just doing a little bit more of that as well. Friends, I really hope that you are inspired to try it. Try the daily prayer if it hasn't been a part of your arsenal. It's on the app, the Wild at Heart app. It's on our website. It's in the back of most of my books. But if you get on the app, what you'll find is actually a whole host of prayers. There's an extended version of the daily prayer. Mm -hmm. And that is when we need a little bit more oomph. Yes. There's a version for heads of households mm -hmm. when you're wanting to include your children and your household in your prayers. Anyway, the idea, friends, is is it really is time to tap in to the resources of God for our strength and maybe to re-up our prayer life here this fall. And next week, we want to pick up on the theme of strength in the practice of Scripture. What does Scripture fit in our lives? 